Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in and checking out this video. Uh, this is Dragon from the Dragon's Den. Um, so recently on my on my street, my Twitch stream, I have uh, restarted my 5e tabletop campaign uh, that we run every other Wednesday at 7.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as I've noted in my streams, that we do run with a few home uh, homebrew rules, little tweaks here and there. And I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of go over those in a separate video. I uh, give everybody a point of reference and to hopefully, you know, just in case someone, is a newbie or someone who's not familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, um, or even people that are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, uh, have a nice point of reference and understand the homebrew rules as we are using them. So the first one that I want to go over is critical. So, uh, you know, in Dungeons and Dragons, um, a critical is t is usually is uh, a natural twenty. Sometimes it's a, a nineteen or a twenty on your on your twenty dice roll, <laughs> and that means you get you know, more damage or something like that uh, <clears throat> in, in, when you're attacking. Uh, the first thing that we're doing is we're actually get we're actually using an alternate rule that I kind of that I kind of like, and I think it's uh, a lot of these come from the Pathfinder rule set, which uh, meshes really well with Dungeons and Dragons. And the first one is that we're going to go over is that the critical hit is actually instead of a D twenty, it is actually a ten, anything ten or higher than than the than the armor class you're trying to hit. So if the if you're fighting a little bit a little itty bitty kobold that has a uh, armor class armor class of like twelve, and you get a twenty a, a total of twenty two, you get a critical. Um, you know, so uh, so it's not strictly tied to a d twenty. It's just at least if it's at least ten or more, then the uh, the minor the other side of that is that a critical failure is, um, you know, less is ten ten or more less than the targets. Uh, armor class and to kind of make things a little more fun we are using a critical hit and a critical fumble deck which which gives a little added a added element to the, the critical hits and failures so it, it's a it's a a card you bridge draw and it has um categories based on the damage type uh, bludgeoning piercing slashing magical damage and it gives a it, it 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 gives a little bit more uh, effect. So it's not just okay. You you hit, you do double damage, and we move on. It has some effect. Like if it's bludgeoning, you can break a bone, break a hand, um, make someone dazed for a couple rounds, that sort of thing. Uh, the second homebrew rule that that we are using is that it pertains to action economy. So one of the things in a uh, uh, criticism of Dungeons and Dragons Five E, and it's a, a in my opinion a valid criticism is the confusion over action economy so when by action economy i mean action economy what i mean is like the things you can do per turn so a typical character has a attack action a move action maybe a bonus action um and you can you know only use a bonus action under cer under certain circumstances if you like uh attack the move you can't do anything else it, it's, there's a good bit of confusion in my opinion so again we're getting this uh this rule from the pathfinder rule set and it's basically three actions per turn that's it um you can you know you get three actions per turn and there is a a chart that's available to my players that, that determines what an action is and if an, some actions that cost more than one action per turn but basically you have three actions um you can uh, you know, you can you do, use them as you see fit. If you want to attack three times, by all means. You want to move three times, you know, attack twice, move once. Any combination of this, it, in you know, so it gives you a lot more free. In my opinion, it gives a lot more freedom to the player, and it's uh, it keeps the action flowing, and it's less confusing. <laughs> now the the next uh, the next home brew is more towards advancement. So we are using milestone advancement which means we're not really keeping track of experience points to get us from one level to another it, it, it's more it's called milestone so at at fixed places upon the journey um usually to at the end of an adventure you level up you know regardless you uh it, it's just you just move to the next level 
Um, the campaign that we're running is actually a few campaigns cobbled together. So there is this, there is a good chance that the, the players will have quests and adventures become available where they are not high enough or a little too high for the, uh, um, for the, the stated adventure for what it's geared towards. And now I will uh, try to on the fly um, boost things if needed, but, base, but pretty much uh, we're going on on a modified milestone where if they complete, you get two um, you need two points to advance to the next level. Now, if you just like a if the players complete a quest or an adventure that is equivalent to their level, they get one point. If they are two levels a high, if they are a, a level higher than the adventure, you get a, a half a point. Two levels uh, higher than the than the given adventure, you get a quarter of a point. Um, nothing but be, nothing below that, because that that in that case it's like really too easy. Um, so they don't get any points below that. But if they want to try and take on an adventure that might be just a little too tough for them, and they succeed, I got they get two points. I want to encourage, um, you know. I want to encourage people to take chances and take risks for good for a large reward. So that's uh, and that's uh, what we're doing for advancement. Now, um, we are going to start moving into the next thing we want to do is like side quests. Um, so we are going to start moving into more of an open world sandbox uh, uh, feel to the campaign where they have a map, uh, the map of the entire Sword Coast of the Forgotten Realms, and how, anywhere else in the Forgotten Realms they want they want to explore. If at any point. <laughs> they feel like um going on a little bit of a side quest quest or a different adventure all they really need to do is you know, is let me know uh what they want to do and you know i'll try to come up with uh i will try to come up with a, an adventure to to give them that choice it's, i'm all about choice and i want them to feel like they have ownership of this campaign so you know, it, it might derail the main storyline, but I want them to have fun. And in in this, if this campaign lasts longer, then all the better. <clears throat> and then the next is uh, homebrew items. So Dungeons and Dragons has a very good list of magical items, and everything from a um, a plus one sword or shield to things like um, the robe of eyes or staff of power. You know, um, um, magical items of 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 any sort, size, description, or power, whatever. However, um, I have quite a, I've collected quite a list of my own of homebrew magical items that I found here and there along along the way that I've just kind of saved or made note of that are not official content of Wizards of the. <laughs> so, um, the way we're hand that I'm handling this is. Uh, pretty much anything that is official official items, um, such as the pre mentioned staff of power or or like the boots of uh, um, elven boots or whatever, are known items. You know they don't really have to know. You know don't really have to make a knowledge check or anything like that. They they're they're common knowledge. In that case, if they want to, whenever they get to a town, um, they can. Uh, Make a make a knowledge check, make a, a roll to see if that town if that item is available in the town, and if they succeed, it is you know, and they have the ability to purchase it if they have the coins. And or uh, a failed roll means it's not available. And this is of course um, relegated to by settlement size. You can't get a a a uh, legendary item you know in a small hamlet stuff like that. Or oh, but then by 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 the other coin. Um, a really common item might be not only a you know very much available in a large town, but it might actually be you know slightly cheaper because it's common. Um, in addition to those, uh, all of those whenever they get has some downtime as a downtime activity, they can make a knowledge check um, to see if they've heard about like they they've heard about a one of these homebrew magical items. Um, a particular homebrew magical item, or if they have access to, like, say, a library or a, a, a seat of learning or knowledge, 
think it reflects um it reflects uh, uh research anyway they can make one check to see if they have if their research or their or their travels they've heard of a particular magical item and if and and this is a cumulative so if they make that check and they get a random item um based off of a chart that i have and they have knowledge of that item, item from that point on and then from that point on they can make the same availability check as they get to uh, from town to town on town to town on uh, downtime <laughs> Or they can, or they can, if they don't want to, if they want to forego the knowledge check, they can just try to randomly see if they find a particular magical item. Um, on the other hand, on the other hand, I've I've imposed a ability to commission an item if they really have a like have an item in mind that that is doesn't exist from the um the official material, and I don't have an actual a homebrew item for it. I can work with the player to have a new magical item created that they can that they can then use and then the last uh, homebrew homebrew rule is of course the rule of cool because why not uh basically this is i this is to encourage clever uh you know clever ideas clever uses for uh, uh spells or items um I, I don't want them to just you know their their go to to be hit something into submission. I want them to encourage you know, thinking and creativity, or just cool. You know, just you know, if they if a, if a warrior just jumps off of a, a of a battle bit and you know onto a dragon's back to try and take it down, that in itself is a cool thing. And if they do that and stuff like that and survive, they get what's what I deemed a point of inspiration, pretty much. And they can only keep one point of inspiration at a time. And at any time, they can use that point of inspiration to re-roll a single die roll, or add two to an existing roll. Um, had a had a, uh, had a couple times so far. Things uh, cool, cool, uh, cool or interesting uses of items or or spells. Um, but so yeah, so there we go. That is an overview of the homebrew rules that we. Uh, we are I have implemented and so far they've gotten a really good reception from my players I hope this has been helpful to maybe understand or uh, understand the, the, the game going forward or and uh, clear up any confusion that you might have for when you're watching a live stream of our of our campaign uh, so and I hope you guys tune in for uh, some of the live streams again that'll be every other Wednesday at 7 30 p.m. to accommodate uh, other people's schedules That'll be on my Twitch channel, which uh, will be in the description of this video. So please, uh, if this is interesting you, um, join in to see how it, how it all pans out and how it all uh, plays. In addition to that, uh, please follow me on, you know, if you uh, think this is cool or you like the content, be sure to hit that follow button, uh, subscribe button down below, and be sure to go over to my Odyssey, my new Odyssey, ch Odyssey channel, which will also be in the description, and give me a follow there. Other than that, thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you guys at the table.